So ever wonder how dark your skies really are? There's actually a device out there that allows you to do just that by measuring the sky brightness. And this cool little device is called the Sky Quality Meter by the company Unihedron. And they were kind enough to send me one free of charge for testing and review purposes for this video. So let's check it out. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. All right, so in the box, you actually get an instruction manual, and it's a very well-written instruction manual. Not only goes over the features, but it shows you how to use it. Not that it's difficult. There's only one button on here, but they did put in the time to explain their product and how to use it and how it was calibrated and everything else. So it is worth the read. So take a few minutes to go over that. I also got a card in the package, and this is advertising their website and their mobile phone app, both for Android and iOS that allows you to contribute to their initiative to track light pollution around the world. So when you take a reading with your meter, you can submit it with the app or you can go right to the website and submit it there as well. I'll show you guys that in a couple minutes real quick. The unit itself comes in a nice velvet case to protect it, mainly to keep the sensor free from dirt, oil, scratches, what have you. Obviously it's important to keep that clean and free from scratches. Operation is, like I said, it's very simple. There's just one button on here. You push it. It takes the reading and it displays it to you in a red display. About the sensor, it is only sensitive to visible light, so they have a near-infrared blocking filter in front of this, so anything in that on that side of the spectrum will not affect your measurements. They calibrate each of the units with an NIST traceable light meter, which puts our accuracy tolerance to plus or minus 0.1 magnitudes per arc second. Like I said, the display is red under really dark skies it'll actually auto dim so if you're in a Bortle 2 Bortle 1 type situation and, and we'll emulate really dark skies here in a second but also down the bottom just as a guide you know the lower the number the brighter the sky so at 16 you can see it's a little bit of a light gray color and they got a lamp post and a moon on there and as the number climbs in the measurements that it takes it's showing you on this graph that you're in the you're in darker and darker skies as it as it goes. So when you take a reading under urban skies or in a well lit office like I am right now, if I hit my start button, the measurement is pretty much instantaneous. That was about a second, right? But if you're under really dark skies, again we're talking border one, two, and maybe even border three, that measurement can take up to sixty seconds to complete. So. When it's measuring, there's nothing on the screen. Just be patient if you're under dark skies. You'll hear a very light beep as it's taking that measurement. So you do have an audible indication that's actually taking a measurement. But if after 80 seconds, it couldn't determine the brightness of the sky because it was too dark, it'll stop beeping. And really the only reason that you would hit a situation like that is if you were testing this in a room that was completely light tight, no stray light at all coming from any sources, can't see your hand in front of your face type of deal. So let me show you what I'm talking about under the dark skies here. If I take the pouch that it came with and cover it up and then hit my start button, I'm going to move this to the mic to see if you can hear it beep. Don't know if you guys will hear that. I'll find out when I do my edits, but it is beeping. It's very low, so it's not annoying, but it is your indication that it's actually working. The display dimmed. It's showing me 22.7. You're probably seeing it kind of flash and scroll on the screen because of the camera's refresh rate, but that's just because the display dimmed down. Anytime you take a reading, after you push the start button, 10 seconds after it shows you your measurement, the display will turn off on its own. The other feature that it has is after it takes a reading, if you hold your start button down, it'll show you the temperature of the unit in Celsius and then Fahrenheit and then the model number and serial number and then shut off. Like I mentioned before, you want to make sure you keep this clean. I would just wipe it with a microfiber cloth if it looks like there's any Orioles or anything like that on there. Keep it in your pouch so you don't scratch it up. And there are two other measurements that will come up under two specific situations. And the first one is a really extremely bright light source. So I'll just turn on my LED light here just so I can show you that one. We'll take a reading and you can see we got what looks like lowercase ends. That's just telling you it's way too bright for it to take a meaning. On the opposite, it would look like this, kind of like upside down U's if it was too dark. And that gets back to that light tight room type of testing that I was speaking about. They also recommend when you take a measurement for better accuracy to disregard your first reading 
and take a second one. Even better, take like four and then average them out. And that's actually how they want you to submit your readings to their, their website or their, their mobile apps. So, you know, take three, four, five, six readings and average them all out. And that would be a more accurate representation of the measurement of the darkness of your sky. Real quick, we'll jump over to the website just to show you. I'll leave the link down in the description, but you see right here, SQM reading. This is where you enter in the, the measurement, your average measurement that you took that night with the date and so forth, and then submit your data. And it's similar on the app. Just come over to the section where you need to submit your data. Use the little wheels to punch in your SQM reading and submit that data off as well. So with that being said, let's take this thing outside in my backyard and take some measurements and see how dark my skies actually are. All right, so like I mentioned, operation's real simple, just one button. So we're just gonna aim this up to the zenith, press and release the button, and it'll take our reading pretty instantaneously because I'm in a Bortle 5 zone. Like I mentioned before, the darker the skies, the longer it'll take for that reading to be complete. So we'll just up to the zenith, press and release and 19.62, which is about right for our area. Now, the app that I was talking about before where you can submit your own data, if you're gonna take a measurement to submit for it, the way that they want you to do it is first hit the button a few times, take a few readings, and that just gets the unit warmed up after you've done that, I don't know, three or four times. Then again, up to the zenith, press and release, and then you wanna turn 90 degrees, take another reading, turn 90 degrees again, take another reading, and then 90 degrees one last time, take your fourth and final reading. Add those four up, divide them by four, that's your average. Now, when you're doing this, as you're taking your readings every 90 degrees, make sure that those readings don't exceed more than 0.2 between each of them. If they do, then that means you probably have some stray light coming in, which is going to affect that average. Um, so do it again, try and you know stay away from stray light, try and stay out of any shadows that'll make the area that you're standing in a little bit darker, because again, it'll affect the reading as well. But once you have it, then just open up the app, punch in your average and submit it. And you can be a citizen scientist, as they call us when you do that. So. You know, it's a fun little unit. I've always wanted to get one of these. The light pollution maps can be old. The last one I looked at, I think was like, the data was from like three years ago. Obviously it's a lot of work to keep those things up to date. So something like this is the best way to measure the darkness that you're under when you're gonna shoot any given night. So that's gonna be a wrap for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Before we go, I wanna say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and at buymeacoffee.com. Always appreciate everybody who subscribes and donates. Everyone that likes, comments, shares, just takes time to watch the videos. It, it really, all that stuff really helps the channel grow. So thank you to each and every one of you. So that wraps it up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one in clear skies.